So do normies uh, still believe that they're good people, in inverted commas? Um, yeah, I guess what I mean by that is uh, respectable people, uh, m morally uh, sound people, um, good upstanding citizens. Do, is that what normies uh, still believe? I think the answer is yes, at least in, well, about 30% of cases, that's definitely true. So how would you define a normie? Um, for me, the phrase I use is consensus hugger. So somebody that doesn't like thinking for themselves, who just is an obedient rule follower and a parrot of the prevailing uh, mainstream media narrative. That's what I think a normie is. I guess another way of looking at it very simply is a normie is somebody who does what they're told always and without exception and they kowtow towards authority. So yeah, the question I'm asking is that do these people uh, believe that they're, they're good people? I think the answer, uh, as I say, in many cases is yeah, they do. Uh, why do they believe that? Well, they associate um, being good with obeying the rules, following the orders given by the higher ups. So because they've done that, they perceive themselves to be good people because they are uh, obedient repeater stations and consensus huggers, obedient order, order followers, and will just do whatever they're told to do and not question anything. So, you know, when the deadly, um, the Divock 91 came along, um, they, they, they rolled up their sleeves and they had it. And uh, they they did what was they they wore um, they took part in the uh, the the fancy fancy dress peasant uh, pantomime, you know the live action role play where they dressed up as um, um, people from the November Hotel Sierra. My feeling about these people is that um, I, I, I and I honestly say this I do forgive them for what what they've done, but, um, you know that they took part in coercion. They took part in bullying people, ostracizing them, um, people who were not like that, them, who thought independently and critically and didn't do what the higher ups were telling them to do. Um, so I've forgiven these people for what they've done. Um, the, 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 big th the big thing though is that, um, does, does that mean that I wanna hang around with these people and, um, not not really if i'm being honest not really um because all i know i'm just gonna i'm not gonna get anything interesting from my interactions with them all i'm gonna get is um just the bbc party line or the here in finland the ule party line just recycled and repeated and regurgitated and um, yeah i've got better things to do than to listen to rehashed bbc uh mainstream media narratives um, the other thing that I would say about these people too is I'm still extremely wary of them because, as I say, I think in probably a good 30% of the cases, they probably know deep down uh, what went on, but um, they're so hardwired towards order following and uh, parroting the narrative that they probably would do the same again. This is 30% of, of people. I don't think it's, it's much more than that, if it's, if it's that. But these are the people that are extremely uh, dangerous people in society. These are the people that in 1930s, Germany would have uh, been first in line to do what the tiny moustache man wanted them to do. So I forgive these people, but I'm, I'm extremely wary of them. And yeah, because um, they're, they're dangerous people, as I say. So do they, do they forgive people like me? Um, I think the answer there is, is definitely no. They're still extremely angry towards people who didn't have it and who are still questioning um, their, their narratives, you know, or sorry, not their narratives, the mainstream uh, narratives that they're just blindly parroting. So just some questions to finish off with. So the first one is, does a good person just blindly follow orders without, without um, ever questioning what they've been asked to do? You know, what would history say about that? 
Second question is, does a good person follow an instruction um, to deprive another person's freedom or maybe physically harm them or just just basically um, you know get get rid of them when they're told to do so by their boss or some higher up or some, some the police or somebody in government the third question do good people obey an order without doing their own research or without engaging their brain so in summary then, what I'm trying to get at here is that um, we, we will never be forgiven by, by the normies who are still, I think in, in about 30% of cases, they're still perceiving themselves to be good people because what they're confusing is following, the order, following orders, doing what they're told to do, uh, they're confusing that with, with morally good behavior you know behavior i suppose you could define in terms of uh, christianity true christianity rather than what goes on in the church of england and the catholic catholic church just just i'm trying to get out there like uh, or what some people might call natural law which is based on the ten commandments anyway that you shouldn't physically harm people or steal their property uh, or uh, take away remove their free will you shouldn't steal that either so I think for many of these um, normies, this hardcore of 30% who will never admit that what they did was wrong or what happened was wrong, these people will never, never admit to, to what they did. They'll never show any remorse about what they did because they sincerely believe that they're good people. Um, and they, they believe that they're good because they always do what they're told to do and that's what they define as being good this is the this is the point that i'm trying to get at here that's what they define as being good being good is not is not like uh stealing stuff you know you shouldn't do shouldn't they don't define what's good in terms of those in terms of the ten commandments you know in terms of true morality what they define as being good is being an obedient unquestioning rule follower and for that reason you know this um this let's call it it you know it could end up being the greatest crime against humanity that's ever been committed this this it and they took part in it you know coercing people you know in, around the water cooler oh have you had it yet oh you really need to have it oh you're not one of those uh, anti britney spears people you know they took part in all of that bullying and coercing but that won't shake from them their belief that they are good people yeah because their belief that they're good people is based around their willingness to comply and do whatever they're told to do without question that's what they define as being good so they'll never you know we might forgive them I, I do, I do forgive them, and I mean that honestly. That doesn't mean that, um, that doesn't stop me from being wary of them, but I do, I do forgive them for what it's worth. Obviously, you know, the main people that they need to, or the main entity that they need to be showing remorse and forgiveness to is to God, obviously. It doesn't really matter whether, to me, whether they show remorse or say sorry for what they did to me. It's neither here nor there. What matters is that they show remorse to the person, the entity that matters, which is God. But anyway, they, they won't show remorse towards us. In fact, they will be extremely angry towards us. And what they won't forgive us for is that they followed the rules, but we didn't. And they'll go absolutely mental about that. Yeah, so you're a bad person and you'll always be a bad person because unlike them, you refused to do what you were told to do. You refused to go and get it. Uh, you refused um, to go along with the live action role play. So your refusal to do that means that uh, you're a bad person because you're not like them. You're not an obedient rule follower. You're not somebody that hugs the consensus. Okay, so that's all I want to say today. So God bless.